Well, I've had a consultation with the speakers and we've agreed on a sequence. Uh, the Honorable Jay Panda will speak next. And then we'll have uh, Sudipto and Mr. Anand, both of whom are threatening to talk about fiscal numbers. So uh, that's the sequencing. Jay. <coughs> Thank you. This room is filled with uh, some of the best minds in the world, some of the top economists. That should intimidate me from talking on uh, an economic subject, but then I wouldn't be a good politician. Uh, so with an audience and a microphone, I'm just going to brazen my way through. I've engaged with uh, UBI for about 18 months, starting with uh, dinner conversations with uh, Shudipto and with Vijay Joshi. So Delhi dinners do serve some purpose. And subsequently with uh, uh, other economist friends, including Abhijit and others, and I've read up on the works of uh, Pranab Bardhan and many others around the world. So when I wrote about this, uh, and I've been trying to get traction in parliament, to be frank, it's very early days. Uh, in the political atmosphere, there isn't yet much traction, but I'm very hopeful, and I'll explain why. Um, you know, my, my, uh, this whole discussion has been, I think, the hottest topic globally with uh, the concern about automation and jobs and robotics. And the same concerns apply in India. 7.1% growth simply does not create the same number of jobs today that 7.1% would have created in the 1990s. And you know about the World Bank uh, statistics or studies uh, talking about danger to large number of existing jobs. But uh, let me go down to the roots of the issue, and I keep citing this. Uh, Rajiv Gandhi's famous quote in the 1980s, that of every rupee spent by government, only 15 paisa reaches the citizen. I, 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 this is something that has, uh, it was a uh, seminal moment for me to get interested in India's uh, politics and economics. And the latest figures that I could find, and I'm willing to be updated on this, is something from the erstwhile planning commission from, from 2009-10 which uh, had a study on PDS and said uh, something like 27 paisa reaches the uh, citizen. 20, 73 paisa goes in uh, salaries, overheads, and what we call leakage. Now, the proponents of PDS or physical distribution by government vis-a-vis -vis cash transfers argue that there are some states that are doing very well. My state, Odisha, is considered one of them. And indeed, if you look at the primary uh, PDS uh, item, which is rice, it is run very well. I spend uh, almost two weeks every month in my constituency meeting hundreds and usually thousands of constituents individually. And uh, barely 1% would tell me that they haven't got the rice. But this is my boss, Chief Minister Naveen Patnaik's flagship program, and he monitors it like a hawk. You move on to wheat distribution, sugar distribution, <coughs> kerosene. It is pathetic in one of the states that is lauded by Jean Dres and others. It is pathetic. Now, I, as a member of parliament, as all members of parliament, are, allow, are, are supposed to conduct quarterly reviews in the district of all the union government programs. So I do that religiously. Uh, not everybody does. One of the things I do is I often force the administration to conduct audits. So audits on midday meal scheme shows huge numbers of ghost students, students that don't exist, fake students. And you could do the same thing with uh, LPG before it went to uh, Aadhaar, exactly the same thing. And I've done this on, I can go sector by <coughs> sector and issue by issue. So there is huge leakage out there. Now. One of the arguments that I come into in discussing with political colleagues is that, well, aren't we moving away from uh, socialist era handouts and more market economics? The, the, the irony is, this is something, UBI is something that's been championed by some of the best known capitalist entrepreneurs of the world. And it's worth thinking about in our, in our context. So, the, you can crunch the numbers, and I'm not going to go into that. There I will defer to the economists. But if you talk about what is widely being talked about, a thousand rupees uh, income per month, 
to bring people above the Tendulkar line. Um, I don't think that is something that harms the incentive to work. I have, uh, this is just empirical gut feel from dealing with people at the grassroots. This is something I keep telling my colleagues that we, if we are wasting 73% of the government expenditure to get 27% uh, in the case of PDS to people, I think there's a win-win here where the beneficiary could get much more than what she is getting and the government would spend much less than what it is spending. And we can crunch the numbers more and look at that in detail. Uh, universal versus basic, uh, I completely agree with Abhijit. In Odisha recently, we had statewide panchayat elections and our party, my party, which has had uh, by far the biggest uh, vote share of the last 20 years, had a setback. And one of the reasons that we had the setback is because of a botch up in targeting. So thousands or tens of thousands of BPL cards were handed out that were found to be not correct by some measure and they were withdrawn. <coughs> and when you withdraw BPL cards, uh, you lose votes. Now, we, I have seen armies of government officials out there going out and examining whether a potential beneficiary has a, has a concrete house or a, or a hovel, has electricity or not, a bicycle or a motorcycle. It is just hugely wasted expenditure and inefficient and politically backfiring. I'm hoping to convince my colleagues that it politically backfires with the example I gave you. Uh, universal with the kind of light touch that Abhijit talked about, I think is probably the way to go. But since there is a sort of a, uh, something like a moral hazard argument being made by some people that targeting is more efficient today, there's the JAM trilogy uh, for delivery. The JAM trilogy is there for delivery, but not for targeting. Targeting still has to be done manually. People have to go and, and, uh, and ascertain whether a beneficiary deserves it or not. So I lean in favor of universal, but I'm not totally close to the idea of targeting if a good argument uh, can be made for it. So in coming to uh, an end of what I've been trying to say, I see the universal basic income or a basic income of some kind as a medium term goal and the roadmap as increasing substitution of distribution by kind with distribution by cash. And uh, uh, I think for non-economist, non-technical policymakers such as myself, Abhijit and Esther's book of a few years ago should be required reading uh, on poor economics, which talks about these RCTs around the world. And as he mentioned, there's been some in my state and my constituency in which I've been involved. And I am a firm believer that there is room for both kinds of both conditional and unconditional uh, transfers. I have seen in my poor rural constituency, very poor people um, pay 50 rupees a month, which they cannot afford, uh, which they can barely afford to send their children to the local private school rather than the free uh, government school. The free government school, by the way, today has excellent infrastructure because of a dozen years of Sarva Shikha Abhiyan and the education cess on tax. But the software is not there. The teacher absenteeism is something that is atrocious. Um, but what I'm trying to say is that my belief in <coughs> rational choices, even by illiterate poor people, is strong when it is measured against the state's competence in spoon feeding them. Not that everybody will make the right choice, so there are some conditional transfers which I support, but an unconditional transfer uh, is not a bad idea at all. I'm a very strong supporter of it. So I see that as a medium term goal, the road ahead, the roadmap being more examples of exchanging um, physical handouts with cash, such as what you saw in LPG. And uh, I have a few other things, but I've exceeded my five minute mark by no, no, three or four minutes. Parliament deserves special privileges. <laughs> <laughs> Well, if I were to practice my parliamentary. Uh, <laughs> as long as you don't walk out. No, I'd be right there <laughs> screaming at you. <laughs> so um, I have 
conditional faith in markets even in rural, undeveloped areas. What that means is this. Let's take Kendrapada, which is my constituency, rural, no industry, but you have uh, municipal towns and some urbanization. Even in villages that are not very remote, the local markets function reasonably well. We still, that means if a poor family has money in hand, they, they would be able to take advantage of uh, uh, not just food choices, but school and other choices. But you push it into some remote areas, and that breaks down at some point. The example he gave was of Niger. I can give you examples where we've had breakdowns, simply because of remoteness, because of uh, the state's writ not running, and things like that. So I, as I said, I, I am a firm believer in rational choices, even by illiterate un, uh, and poor people, uh, except in cases where there is a breakdown of some sort or non-availability of uh, food, as, as Abhijit explained. So I think there's room for both. And I think, as I said, to reiterate once more, the road ahead has to be. We have a plethora of government handouts. Plethora. You know, government gives out bicycles. And that's a good thing, by the way. Bicycles to, to uh, girls, students is a great thing. But government gives out umbrellas. Um, government gives out blankets. Uh, government gives out uh, kerosene, which never reaches anybody. It goes to the transport sector. And I can list so many other things that do not reach. And in Odessa, like I said, while the rice does reach, most of the other stuff doesn't. Thank you. That was, that was really fascinating, and thank you. Actually, I have a suggestion. You know, what you said, uh, one way of kind of doing this gradual transition, because it's very attractive, and all our reforms for the last 30 years have been gradualistic. You know, if the central government were willing to convert any of its schemes into a lump sum transfer and simply let the state government experiment, you would get an explosion of experiments Lots of work for Abhijit and Esther to follow up, and Karthik, I see, is nodding his head, because I think your point about uh, schools, there's the entire school voucher thing which could be brought in. So that's certainly something that needs a lot more thinking about. Did you want to intervene? One comment. I think while the idea of a UBI is still at a very early stage, there is tremendous enthusiasm for converting more of these yeah, yeah. Sch uh, schemes into lump sum payouts. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, UBI is a form of cash transfer. So I think there's a lot of support for cash transfer. You know, I'm, I'm a supporter of that, no question.